Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. Sponsored by A Better Root Planner. A Better Root Planner makes finding chargers an intuitive experience. When you're zoomed out, the highest power charging stations are displayed. When you zoom in, more lower power charging stations appear, helping you find the best charger on your way. Another feature making this a better route planner. And brought to you by Bior. Build your own robot kit. Bring robotics to the kids level. And brought to you by Ecoware.us, where we bring you new designs every week. They are carbon neutral, and a tree is planted for every order. Yeah, here's what we got this week. Oh, no. It's, the, it's a new one. Yeah, it's kind of a sad one. Kind of a sad one. But it's true. Gets the conversation going, and yeah, all... And yeah, all of the products on EcoWare are 100% carbon offset. Um, and on top of that, we plant a tree for every order. So that's carbon negative. And Jesse and I will be at Fully Charged Live in Austin, Texas on February 1st and 2nd. We'll be on stage live with Robert Llewellyn. We have a discount code for you to use down in the description below that'll get you 15% off tickets. So unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the Cybertruck unveiling is going to be November 21st. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be there live streaming for you. Uh, we're probably going to have two live streams up. And I would say that for me, this is the most exciting Tesla unveil yet. What about the semi Roadster unveil? That was the best event yet, the most mm -hmm. amazing. But I didn't think at the time that it was going to be that great because I thought, you know, it's a Tesla semi truck, which is cool. But like... For most people, I don't think the semi-truck was that exciting because most people don't drive semi-trucks. But anyone can drive a pickup truck. So I see. So because, yeah, we weren't that excited. We were like, oh, well, I guess there'll be the truck. Maybe there'll be a surprise. Right. And there was a surprise. The Roadster was amazing. Um, but now we're fully expecting the truck. Right. I mean, no one expected a Roadster to drive out of the back of the truck. Mm. I think we did. That's right. We did. But we said that something like that would probably happen. But that seemed like a crazy idea. And the funny thing is, I mean, in America, pickup trucks are the biggest thing ever. So you would understand why that would be a big U.S. story. But even people living in other countries think this is a big deal. Why? Because Elon's been intriguing us all with his tweets. Right. We've only seen one picture of the truck and people can't make heads nor tails of it. Quite literally, they don't know if it's the front. They don't know if it's the back. They don't know if it's not part of the truck at all like people are just like i guess it would have to look like this i mean we're less than a week away and the suspense is intensifying every day mm -hmm. and i believe this is because we know what elon is capable of if you're watching the show now which you are then you know that elon can make what everyone thought was impossible possible Right. He can make rockets reusable and land. He can connect the human brain to a computer. He can turn an idea for an electric car company 15 years ago into the biggest, most sought after electric car company in the world with cars that are driving with level two autonomy. That's not even to mention solar roofs and so many other mind boggling disruptions. I mean, so this is all to say thank you, Elon for making life fun, for giving us something to look forward to, because we've all been just looking forward to this event. Right. Any other car company that said that they were coming out with a new pickup truck, and I would have been like, okay, most likely it's not going to be electric, if, it, if they just said a new pickup truck. Even if they said it was going to be an electric pickup truck, I would be excited, but I wouldn't be this excited, right? Because Elon has been hyping this so much. There have been so many tweets where he is talking about it looking so cool. Yeah, I mean, will it look like this? Will it look like this? I mean, these are fan base designs people that are like you know i i think i figured it out i mm -hmm. from his tweet and the angle of the rain coming down and if i uh put more light on the subject i think i can figure out what he was referring right. to so it's great he's been just intriguing the fan base to try and come up with what is going on and then about a month ago he tweeted this out cybertruck doesn't look like anything i've seen bouncing around the internet it's closer to an armored personnel carrier from the future so does this kind of what he means I mean, I, I feel like these are armored personnel carriers of the present. Okay, but how about these? These are more futuristic. Yeah, I suppose he could be talking about something like this. Because let's keep this design in mind. This was released at the Roadster Semi Truck Unveil. He unveiled this, and we didn't know what he was talking about. We didn't know if this was going to be the pickup truck or if this... I mean, he kind of referred to this as some new vehicle they were working on that was like a construction vehicle. And by... Uh, doing the scale between the pickup truck and the back, this would be probably too big for roads. 
Right. And I mean, because this was at the semi-truck unveiling, I think that this was something that Franz had probably sketched up because Elon was like, oh, I just love driving around this prototype uh, semi-truck. What if it was a pickup truck? And then they probably had a fun launch conversation where Elon was like, oh, and I bet you could fit a Ford F-150 in the back. And so Franz scribbled it out and, and showed it to him and Elon was like that's so fun I want to show that at the semi truck unveiling I think that's what kind of what happened and I think a lot of people have been basing their ideas about the cyber truck on this truck right it looks quintessentially familiar compared to a Tesla product so a lot of what we've been seeing are familiar compared to the Model X the Model 3 or the Model S but let's talk about what the Cybertruck is designed for. It is not, in my opinion, designed for mass consumption. Right. He's said before that this truck is not going to be for everyone, that it's going to be cyberpunk, that it's going to look like it's from the future, and that it's not going to look like a, your typical run-of-the-mill Ford F-150 or Silverado. I mean, past Tesla concept cars have come out looking very close to the final production design. Yeah, so I don't think he's trying to make a Ford 150 clone, something that people can just go out and buy. I think that he's having some fun. But what if the Cybertruck is revealed and it looks crazy futuristic? What if it looks something like this? But without the gun, I'm, I'm assuming? Yeah. Hopefully without the gun. Okay. I believe what this Cybertruck is about is igniting our imagination. Elon is at a point in his life and his career where he can play. Yeah, we're not in the middle of a production hell anymore like we were with Model 3 a couple of years ago. The stock is now rebounded nicely. Gigafactory 3 is almost fully running. Gigafactory 4 has just been announced. Uh, SpaceX is doing well. Everything is going well. So why not have some fun and make a pickup truck that just makes Elon happy? And why do we need to have pickup trucks that look like this anyway? So, right. I mean, these are the big contenders, right? The, the Dodge Ram, the Silverado, the Ford F-Series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all just kind of... I don't know. They look very similar. If you were to switch the badges on any of them and then you pulled the cloth off of them and you said, Jesse, guess what kind of truck it was? I would just go based on the badge. There's nothing on any of them that I would be like, oh, it's got the it's got the spoiler. So it must be the Silverado. Like I I can't tell. This truck, though, <laughs> according to Elon, is going to look so futuristic and so cool that it's not even going to look anything like the pickup trucks that we've seen before. Right. He said it's going to look like it just drove off a movie set. So, I mean, let's show you some possible cyber truck ideas. Right. And keep in mind, we're just showing you, you know, lots of different artists who weren't necessarily trying to make uh, Elon's cyber truck. But, you know, it's going to be of a different style. I mean, I this is how he thinks. Yeah. I right. Mean, he's, he's thinking about life on Mars. So, I mean, his truck should fit in with this futuristic city on Mars. And I mean, what is a pickup truck anyway? Well, it was supposed to be a very utilitarian vehicle meant to carry loads of stuff. And it always has been. If you look back in history, uh, pickup trucks have been, you know, beds that you carry stuff around in, stuff from job sites, construction sites, farms. Uh, it has become, though, a commuter vehicle for most. But a very popular commuter vehicle at that. Yeah. So if we look at sales in the U.S. in 2018, we see that Ford and Chevy and Ram and all the different uh, pickup truck series have sold in very high numbers. Mm -hmm. And it appears that Americans are switching to bigger and bigger trucks. Now, in 2012, one out of every five car sales in the U.S. was a sedan. Today, it's barely one in 10. People want SUVs, which is now 70% of the U.S. market. Yeah, Ford and Fiat have stopped making family sedans altogether. Light trucks make up 84% of GM's American sales and 83% of Ford's sales. Now, let's think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. If Tesla is able to cut into that market. That is not going to just hurt Ford and GM. That could kill them. Because this is their last big thing. They decided to double down on trucks. And for those of you who know anything about gambling, to double down means that if you screw up, you're doubly screwed. Right. So by going into it 83 or 84%, means that any market share that Tesla can steal away is a huge portion of GM or Ford's market share. And why have so many Americans switched to bigger and bigger cars and trucks? Right, because they're not that popular in Europe. So there yeah, must be a reason yeah, what's, why. What's the difference between Europe and the United States? Gas well, prices. It's gas prices. And why are American gas prices so low? Because they're subsidized by... Your tax dollars. 
you are paying to keep gas prices low, which means that everyone in America can drive a bigger and bigger car. Now, I don't think that that's the only reason why Americans are buying lots of trucks. Okay, what's another reason? I think it's because our roads are getting worse. A recent survey of truck drivers showed that 60% think that roads are getting worse. And so who are buying pickup trucks in America? Well, luckily we have some data on that thanks to Cox Automotive. And uh, well, let's let's take a look. As you can see here, the demographics of who's buying these pickup trucks, well, it's largely white, largely male, largely people who have a median income of $70,000 or higher. And mid to late 40s to early 50s in age. That's really interesting to me because it shows that this isn't as big with younger people. Right. And the other interesting thing is that it matches up pretty well with our channel's demographics. <laughs> Did you know that there are more people over the age of 65 watching this than there are people under the age of 17? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Pretty hmm. crazy. And what I thought was interesting from this graph is it shows that most Americans who are thinking of buying a full-size pickup truck want to buy a domestic pickup truck, a made-in-America pickup truck. Right. Now, do you know any brands that are made in America? Uh, Chevy, uh, Ford, R Ram? No, well, I mean, they're Fiat Chrysler now, so it's, it's okay. a lot harder to push that. But yeah, they're kind of an American brand. If only there was like a really American brand. Tesla will be an American brand. <laughs> because the trucks are going to be made in the United States. This next infographic I thought was really interesting. It shows where full-size pickup drivers live. For the most part, they live in the middle of the country. Interesting. And the, the funny thing is, is that all of these places are places where Teslas don't sell that well. It makes sense. Most Teslas are sedans. Right. So it, it would make sense that they don't sell well in these places. And what's the number one factor that people buying a large pickup truck want? They want to be tough. Yeah, they want reliable. Mm -hmm. That is what they all say. You can see this overwhelming majority want reliability. What do you think of when you think of an electric car? They're pretty freaking reliable. Yeah. I've been driving electric for longer than I drove gas. And when I drove gas, about every three to four months, I would have some problem that meant that I really needed to take the car into the shop. There was no question. There was no maybe. It was like, oh, my car doesn't go over 25 miles an hour. I guess I have to take it to the shop. I've never had that problem with any of the electric cars I've driven. Another thing that people buying trucks want? Off-roading is actually the most popular must-have for full-size truck owners. Now, I know that people in Europe must be going... What are you talking about? Right. What, what is, what is <laughs> off-road? Where Where is that? Uh, we're kidding, of course. But the next big thing would be uh, trailer stability assist, hidden storage compartments. Huh? I'm just saying. Uh, we've already seen with Rivian that there, once you get rid of the gas engine and all the crap that comes along with it, there's plenty of space to stash things away. I, I mean, even if you took just a regular old, you know, run-of-the-mill pickup truck and you turned it electric, you'd have a huge frunk which I think a lot of people would be very excited about. Now, this next slide is interesting because if you look at it at first, you might be like, I don't see why this helps your argument. Mm -hmm. But so I want you to look at this. It shows what people are thinking about buying in a pickup truck. Um, gasoline, diesel, hybrid, compressed natural gas. What don't you see on the chart? Uh, electric. Right. They're not considering it because it doesn't exist. And there's just not a culture driven around this. You know, because it doesn't exist, no one, no one is thinking about it. And here's the crazy part, what people expect to get for gas mileage with a full-size pickup truck, 19.2 miles per gallon. And when they're thinking of maybe buying a midsize instead, they're thinking of that primarily because it'll be more economical, it'll be more fuel efficient, and they're thinking they'll get 22.1 miles to the gallon. So that's obviously on their mind. They're thinking about fuel efficiency. And the great thing about an electric pickup truck is the fuel efficiency in terms of money, in terms of like how much you're going to have to pay to charge this thing. It's going to be so significantly less. It's going to be stupid. Like people are going to look at it and just be like, I don't believe you because the number that you're telling me, my my average, you know, what I'm going to be spending on fuel is so stupendously low that I can't, I can't believe you because it sounds, I must have been doing something wrong my whole life. I must have been drilling holes in my gas tank for this number that you're giving me, the savings, to make any sense at all. And so the whole point of this cyber truck is to grab people's attention and imaginations. It will be the number one thing being talked about at Thanksgiving in America. I can promise you that. Right. The timing is 
Perfect. Right. And it's going to be covered in all of the press. Why? Because it's going to look ridiculous. Right. The more ridiculous, the crazier, the more fiddly bits it has, the better. Because what will grab people's attention? Cool stuff. Right. Cool, futuristic looking. Here's the future today. That's what we all want. That's why when you go to the movies, most people aren't driving around in boring old sedans. They're driving around in cool, flying, glass, metal, science fiction-y, neat looking stuff. Now think about this for a second. When the Cybertruck comes out, you're not going to be able to buy one tomorrow. It's going to take a couple of years before Tesla has it available. What's going to happen during those couple of years? People are going to be thinking about this crazy truck so that when Tesla finally comes out with a less crazy truck, a more Ford 150-ish affordable truck, all of those people who had been thinking about it, putting off the decision, their trucks will be getting older and they will go, hmm, I'm going to give that thing a test drive. And also what will be happening during that time when you can't buy the pickup truck, but it's here and and all the stats are there and everyone is so excited about it, is that people are going to go, Tesla, huh? Hmm. I hadn't been considering it at all because I, you know, I didn't want to buy a sedan. But now that I know the amazing stats that the truck is going to have, maybe I'll take a look at that Model 3. Oh, gee whiz, look at the zero to 60 time on the performance model. Maybe I don't need to replace my pickup truck right away. Maybe I need to replace the family car. Maybe that could be a Model Y. Maybe that could be a Model 3. Now let's think about how Tesla timed this. The LA Auto Show is taking place the same week as the pickup truck unveil. That's when the press is available. And so Thursday is the Tesla pickup truck. Friday is still the last day of press only at LA Auto Show. And then a whole week of public going to LA Auto Show. That means that all the press in the world that covers the automotive sector is in LA. Right. That means that they are going to be going to the LA Auto Show. I'm almost positive Tesla will have their truck there. And then Tesla, for the first time ever, is having their cars available at an auto show. They're going to be doing test drives. So just picture this for a second. You heard something about this crazy Tesla Cybertruck the day mm-hmm. before. You go to the LA Auto Show to cover it as a press member. And then you get to see all their cars and you report all of this back home to your folks at home. And here's the really cool part. We have constantly been saying on this show that what convinces people to go electric or buy a Tesla more than anything else, it's butts and seats. And what is Tesla going to be doing at the LA Auto Show? They're going to be doing butts and seats. They're going to have people be sitting in the car and experiencing electric propulsion for perhaps the first time. And so for the press, people who maybe just cover trucks, who've never sat in a Tesla because they're like, I only cover trucks. This isn't pertinent to my job to cover the Model S. Suddenly are going to be in a Model S. And as they're hurtling along, something in their brain is going to go click. And they're going to say, oh, electric. I've My mind has been changed. This is so strategic from Tesla. I think it's a really, really smart idea. So you're all here because you want to conjecture about what the Cybertruck could have in terms of stats. And it's going to be pretty... Wide. We don't really have any idea what the stats on this truck could be. So we're going to go, I think we're going to go low end. That's if Elon decided, hey, I really want to make sure that as many people can get in this truck as possible. And we're going to go high end to to say if Elon was like, we're going to put the nail in the coffin on, you know, the Ford Raptor. You know, that's that thing's going to look like a little baby toy by the time we're done with it. All right. Speaking of ranges, what do you think the range is going to be? Well, I think that the lowest range they could possibly do on a Tesla, because it's a Tesla, is probably going to be around 250 miles. Could be a little less, maybe around 215, like they did with the Model 3. But I think for a truck, um, base range should be around 250. I'll agree with that. How about high end? On the high end, I would go 600 plus, because this is going to be a truck. Mind okay. you, this is not a small vehicle. No, We're you, all can, used you can to having you can fit a bigger battery. Lifted pickup trucks. So yeah, if they could put the Roadster 200 kilowatt hour battery in there, they should do that and make this huge. I mean, and maybe it's the the top end truck can go 600 plus miles. All right. So you're saying battery wise, that would be a low end of 100 kilowatt hours, high end of 200 kilowatt hours. Yeah, I think that's probably what we're talking about. So the next stat I think we're looking at here is charging speed. I personally think that 250 kilowatts is going to be the max just because that's what superchargers can put out today. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, payload, that's super important for a pickup truck. Um, what do you think the low end is going to be? So I think that Elon really would want to outdo the Ford F-150 
um, at the very least. Okay, so uh, the F-150 is like the best payload on that is like 2,100 pounds? Yeah, I think he'd go for 2,300 pounds or something like that just to stomp the Ford F-150 into the dirt. Okay, but there's lots of pickups uh, when you get into the 250 and 350 series and the bigger series that can carry more. So what do you think you'd do on the high end? On the high end, I mean, I know that the payload on a like Ford 350 is like 7,000 pounds. I don't know if Tesla's going to go that high. They they might want to try and beat that out, but I'm going to say 6,000 pounds. I, I would be more than three, happy. Three ton pickup. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Towing capacity. I think that the low end here is going to be about 15,000 pounds. I mean, this truck is going to have a lot of torque, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. Okay. High end? High end, I'm thinking 22,000 pounds. I okay. mean, if this is, again, if, we, if he rolls out this thing and it's like, oh, that's almost a tank all right so torque now keep in mind that sparky has 1247 newton meters of torque which is incredible right yeah i mean the the top end model x's and s's have that much torque i think that on the low end on a low end scenario the base truck would probably have at least a thousand newton meters of torque okay. i mean it, it does need to tow and, and carry lots of heavy stuff which an S doesn't necessarily need to do. So I think that a thousand would be, I'm going to guess around the base. Okay. And what about the high end? The high end, I'm thinking 2000 Newton meters. I don't know. It, I mean, it could have a lot. So horsepower, Sparky has 588 horsepower. Right. I'm, I'm thinking that the low end is probably going to be around 500 and the high end thousand. I mean, why not with electric motors? Just, Keep increasing it until you can do that. All right. So let's talk about the cab of this truck. Do you think that it's going to have uh, just, you know, a bench seat or two seats or do you think it's going to have more? I think it's definitely going to have more. I think that this is going to be a, an extended cab. I think that we're going to be looking at five seats. But I know that Elon really likes having seven seats in his cars. <laughs> He's got five boys. <laughs> he has five boys. So, you know, a six seater isn't usually that typical. So, I mean, if there was a way to make it seven, I think that he might. Well, then, come it's, up with then it's a personnel carrier, for then, sure. Then okay. it would certainly be, yeah. All right, so the big one, price. I think on the low end, if they really wanted to make an affordable pickup truck, I think that the base could be around $50,000, maybe. Okay, so more expensive than most pickup trucks, but not out of the reach. Yeah, and I mean, 50 maybe as like the base, base, base model. You know, it doesn't include something that most of the other ones are going to, you know, have. It's going to be kind of like the base Model 3 where it's going to be tough to get. My guess is that the actual base is probably going to be around 60. Okay. And what do you think the high end would be? I think in a top end, balls to the wall kind of scenario, uh, 110,000, maybe even as high as 150, you know, for the, the model with all the features. I don't really think this Cybertruck is designed for low end consumers. I think it's designed to do a smackdown to the truck industry. So I think that it's going to come out at no less than $75,000. Mm -hmm. I think that night they'll open it up for sales and you'll have to put like $5,000 down. And I think that the reason for that is that Tesla has to beat Rivian. I think Rivian set the standard. And so Tesla's like, okay, we either have to go low and just come in under them with a really affordable, cool pickup truck, or we have to go high. And Elon's basically said it's going to be high because he said it's going to be the cyber truck. Right. And then there's this, I mean, of course, there's this hope where people are like, Maybe it's going to be low and high. It's going to it's going to beat it out for less money. I think that uh, you know Tesla doesn't typically come in under what most people would expect. I think that you know the Model Three was just about as low as everyone could basically fathom. But as we see, the average Model Three sells for over forty grand. So thinking about it in this way, the Cybertruck is going to kind of be like the Model S of pickup trucks. I think it's going to be the roadster of pickup trucks. This particular cyber truck, I think it's going to just be a complete smackdown. Um, but you know what? We're probably going to be wrong. I mean, right. there's just no way to get into Elon's head. Um, and they've done a perfect job of keeping this a secret. Right. But let's go on to conjecture about what the event might look like. Okay, so I picture that it's going to take place at the Hawthorne Airfield, which is right next to SpaceX. This is where they did these uh, Roadster Semi event. It gives them more space to drive around because I think they're actually going to drive this thing. Unlike the Model Y event where it just basically sat out there on stage, mm -hmm. I think this is going to be driven out for us to see it all in its glory. And I think that it's going to come out 
towing a rocket. And that rocket, I believe, is going to be the Falcon 9. So before you're like, but Zach and Jesse, the Falcon 9, it must weigh so much. Keep in mind that when it's not full of fuel, yeah, it weighs a lot less. When it's full of fuel, it weighs over 500,000 kilograms. But when it's empty, it weighs 23,000 kilograms or 51,000 pounds. So that's you might be saying, well, you just said it couldn't tow more than 22,000. That's, right. that's different. Trucks can pull generally more than that. I mean, we saw Ford's electric prototype pull a train which weighs a million pounds which weighs a million pounds of course it's on a track and there's no friction so what i think that you know in order for elon to kind of be realistic and to, and to say like yeah of course we could pull anything that's on wheels um i think that he would maybe tow out the rocket i think that you know another truck would come out with you know a real trailer really towing the dragon capsule okay i kind of think in my wildest dreams that mm -hmm. the Cybertruck will come out autonomously driving itself, following Elon like a, a puppy, um, and then it will be, you know, towing this rocket. Mm -hmm. um, he will then, like, uncouple it from the rocket. It'll drive over to this, like, dirt patch, mm -hmm. and it will start to do tank turns behind him while he gives the rest of the presentation. Right. So, I mean, this is a question that a lot of people have been asking is how many motors this thing is going to have. I think it's going to have four. I, I think it kind of has to have four. Rivian has four. I think Tesla knows they have to have four. And if you have four motors, technically, you, you can, can do, do a tank turn. Now, the thing is, Rivian has not done a tank turn yet. They've said they're going to, and they can, but they haven't done it. I think that if Elon does it first, he will grab that from them. I think that's a, that's a great point. I also think that the Cybertruck is going to have the ability to plug in tools. So if you have a you know chop saw, a circular saw, um, you're going to be able to plug that in. I think it's going to have a built-in air compressor so that you can plug in your air tools so that you can install the um, the solar roof. It'll be like the, the contractor truck for the solar roof. Right. And so, I mean, you're talking like a 110 outlet, maybe even a 220 outlet Why not? Um, for some, some heavier powered gear. I think it'd be really cool to have a bunch of tools that would integrate with the truck. Now, what this would probably be for like a, a particular, you know, contractor package, but, you know, you'd stick the tools like right into the side Ooh. or somewhere, you know, on the side, inside of the bed, um, or maybe the bed would kind of flip up and then maybe the tailgate comes down and a, and a saw flips out of it. Yeah. So you get a table saw to it, the, the whole thing, the bed could self level. So Ooh. that way you'd have a nice level you know, surface no matter where you are in the, wow. in the wilderness. Building I might your just cabin. stop being a YouTuber and go back to construction if that happens. That's uh, it would be very fun. Now, let's talk about some other things that this truck might have. I think it's going to have a HEPA filter, just like the Model X. I yeah. think that if you're driving around off roading in the dust, that you're going to want that. Yes. I also think it's going to have an unbreakable windshield because we saw this and everyone has completely forgotten this from the truck unveiling because we were so enamored by the Roadster. But the semi truck has an unbreakable windshield. They launched a trailer hitch at it and it just bounced off. Right. So, I mean, I think that a cool thing would be to have Elon with a sledgehammer go boom off. Oh, the I think it'd be better if Elon got in the truck. And then he's attacked by a wild herd of like uh, post-apocalyptic zombies with with sledgehammers, sledgehammers trying to kill him. And we're all standing there like, no, Elon's going to die. And they just bounce off. Yeah. I mean, why that's not? A, sure. Why not dream? Post-apocalyptic zombies. I think it's just a guy with a sledgehammer coming out and bouncing it off the windshield would be cool enough. And I think that alone would be enough to get people talking at, you know, around the, the water cooler and being like, I can't wait to have my truck so I can just attack it. I, and exactly. And I think, again, the conversation is going to take a big turn in the center of the country because the center of the country, unfortunately, has been left out of this conversation about Tesla for, yeah. the, for the most part. I know that there are lots of you out there living in the center of the country. There's so many states where you can't even buy a Tesla and you can't get service for a Tesla. Right. And I think that this is going to start to change people's minds. Now, if you do live in those states, I know that you exist, but I know that you don't have a lot of people to talk electric cars with. And I think that this specific event is going to change that forever. So tune in next Thursday night. It'll start at about eight o'clock Pacific time. Um, and we are going to be broadcasting probably on two live streams on this channel. Or, so, or maybe one we have, we we're getting all of our gear completely set up. So just be sure to be checking the channel to see 
the live stream. I'm sure there's going to be, uh, you know, the Tesla live stream as well. So get both of those open on your computer and enjoy because it's going to be crazy. We're definitely going to be, you know, I'm going to try and get as close to that truck as we can. Yeah. Usually there's test drives at uh, events. At the, at the last few events, there have been test drives. I believe, yeah, that if you put money down on a truck that night, you're going to get a ride in one. So we might be able to get a ride in one. Who knows? Um, and then the next day for In-Depth on Friday, we're going to be giving you all of our thoughts about what happened the night before. So be sure to tune in next Friday. And we just are a week. super excited. Um, we can barely sleep now. I don't right. know what we're going to do the night before the event. So thank you so much for watching this In-Depth. Now you know.